So we now know what a spectrum is. We know how, if you have a particular spectrum what it would look like to the human eye, which might be nothing at all if it's off in the infrared or ultraviolet. Um, what are we actually going to use these things for? Well, I guess that's one of the great things is we can start to use them to understand what things are made up of. It's great to say that you're invisible because you're in the infrared, but it doesn't tell me much more. Otherwise, it's okay to say, I can see you, but I can't tell that much more. So what we have to do is learn what spectra different things look like and what we can learn from them. So let's start by when you what's a spectrum of, say, Brad look like? Yeah, I mean, because obviously a spectrum of me would look like, hopefully, a different than a spectrum of a star, for instance. Yeah, now a spectrum of you is going to be a bit complicated because mostly you're shining not because of your radiant personality, <laughs> but because there are lights in this room and the lights are bouncing off you. So if I actually took a spectrum of you, it probably wouldn't be a spectrum of anything specific to you. It would be a spectrum of whatever the light bulbs in this room are. Just like if we were to take a spectrum of, say, the moon from Earth, a lot of that would be light from the sun bouncing off the moon and coming back to us. Yes. So spectra of things that don't shine by themselves are put aside for the moment. That's, I mean, there's still important things. For example, your shirt is blue. Um, whereas your skin is pink, that means that the light coming in, um, the blue light is reflected off your shirt, whereas the other colours are absorbed a bit and so on. So you can learn something from reflection spectra. We'll talk much more, more about that when we get onto planets. Yep. But for the moment we're interested in the sun. So let's actually study things that actually emit light. So let's take something that emits light. OK, so here we have an uh, old-fashioned incandescent light bulb. And what you've got here is a little tungsten filament that's heated up to about 3,000 degrees, and that's what emits light. So it's that tungsten filament emitting the light that we would essentially take a spectrum of. So if you get a spectrum of this, here's what it looks like. So we have our bluer colours on the left, our redder colours on the right, and kind of our greeny yellow towards the middle. And this is the wavelength range of the human eye can see, so about 400 nanometers to 700. So it's only a tiny bit of that electromagnetic spectrum. And what you can see is it's emitting light at all those wavelengths. This is what you call a continuum spectrum because it's everywhere. But there's clearly more up this end than at that end. That's right. We're getting about 0.6 at around 700 and less than 0.2 around 400. So there's a lot more light being emitted in these redder colors than these bluer colors. And you know that things under incandescent light look a bit more warm, if you like. That's right. It's not that blue, colder light that we sometimes get in other light bulbs. Yep. But clearly something interesting is going on here. So let's extend the spectrum a bit beyond what the human eye can see out into the infrared. So now instead of going out to 700, which is where the human eye stops seeing, we're going all the way out to 4,000 nanometers, 4 micrometers. So that's into the infrared, way beyond what we can see. Yeah, so we can only see this bit. Okay. But what you can see is the spectrum goes up and then it comes down again. It has a peak out at about 1 micrometer. So it's, the light is actually peaking further than what we can see yes. and then keeping going down. So if we take the part that we can see, it's actually a small amount of the total output of that light. Yes, and so most of the output is actually out in the infrared from this particular thing. And I guess you can almost feel that if you can put your hand near but not touching right. an incandescent light bulb. There's a it's lot of warm. heat coming yeah, out. Yeah, that's right. Some of that's by radiation, some of it's by convection and other things like that. But uh, it's mostly coming out over in the infrared. But let's take something that's a bit cooler. So, for example, let's imagine we had a campfire and we're going to look at the glowing embers at the bottom of a campfire. Which is cooler than our light bulb that we've just been ha having on for so, hours. So this might be a, um, a thousand degrees, 800 degrees, something like that, rather than 3000 degrees for a tungsten filament. Yep. And now the spectrum, again going all the way out into the infrared, looks like this. So the yellow is the tungsten light bulb and the red is our campfire. So we're seeing very little in the visible colors, which kind of makes sense. It's starting to get quite faint. There's a tad a little bit of light and there is a little bit of light that we can just see. Just at the very reddest end of what the human eye can see. And it does look red, but most of it by far is contained in the one to two to three thousand uh, regime way into the infrared. And that's the radiant heat you get from a campfire. So, so you if feel we were, it with your skin, even if you can't see it with your eyes. That's right. So if we were looking with, say, an infrared camera, it would actually be glowing. It would be very much brighter, yes. Okay. If you had a camera that worked out at you know, three microns or something like that. You would see this huge source of light. Yes. Okay. Now, how about if we go even cooler still? What's cooler than a campfire? Well, maybe she is. <laughs> so let's um, imagine we take a spectrum of her. Uh, next time I'm invited to the palace, I'll bring a spectrometer along <laughs> right. with me. <laughs> exactly. Everyone always packs their spectrometer when they visit the Queen. And so she would be at a temperature of, I don't know, 35 Celsius, so about 300 Kelvin. Okay. And so a spectrum of, and 
probably the same amount of coolness as you and me. <laughs> We're probably similar in terms of temperature to the Queen, yes. And uh, that will give you a spectrum like this blue line here, which peaks out at around 10 micrometers. So, I mean, not even close to the visible low or near infrared and the main infrared that this uh, ember is. Yes, yeah, so right now you're seeing that blue line is so zero down here, you just don't see humans Anything. shining at visible light. That's right, and I guess, we, I mean, we don't really feel us radiating. Yes, there's a little bit of effect there, but we're not glowing, let's say, like the ember or the hot light bulb. Yes, but you can have a camera that looks out at, say, 10 micron wavelength. These are thermal imaging cameras. Yes, yeah, so kind of like that, yeah, this, this night vision or this kind of uh, flur vision sometimes, they say. Yeah, I mean, there are many different sorts of night vision, most yeah. of which are not this, but yeah, uh, yeah. Um, this is an infrared, thermal infrared image of a person. And what you can see is it's bright. This is one of these false color images. So this is not really a color that's telling you the intensity. So this is kind of when we looked at with that radio where we were kind of colorizing it to get a measure of intensity rather than true color. That's right. So you can see the hot bits like the forehead is bright. The hair looks darker because if you feel the hair, yeah, it's, a bit, it's cooler. a bit further away from the skin. So it's not as hot as the skin. And the, 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 sh the uh, color of his shirt looks darker because again, it's away from the skin and therefore probably more like room temperature mm. rather than skin temperature. And he has this, yeah, this nice bag on him, which I guess we can't see visibly, but clearly... Yeah, and it turns out that infrared can penetrate some things that visible light can't, like plastic bin liners. But what about his... he's wearing glasses, but his eyes are dark. Well, the glasses are transparent at visible wavelengths, but they're opaque at this particular infrared wavelength. So this is kind of the, re the reverse of what we're saying with the garbage bag, right? Where yes. it's not opaque, but it is in the... Yeah. And it's, it, it's a big pain when you're actually trying to build um, spectrometers. You have to use the right sorts of glass that let the light through. Because something so, that's transparent for our eyes may not be transparent at infrared or ultraviolet wavelengths. So you're going to take like a, a normal mirror and just put, put it down in front of an ultraviolet or an infrared camera necessarily. Yeah, you have to be very careful about what sort of glass you use okay. in your lenses. So that's thermal imaging. Um, but I guess there is a little bit of combination, right? I mean, yes, he's emitting heat but we can still see him visibly, right? Yes. So now we probably have enough information to work out what you would look like all up. Yes. And so this would be your spectrum, probably my spectrum and the Queen's spectrum. And it's going to have two components. One is reflected light from the light bulbs. Right. So that's actually a spectrum of the light bulbs, not of us. Bouncing off of us. And yes. that's a visible light. If you turn the lights out, that would go away. And we would still be left with this. And this would be our heat. Um, and if you killed you, then that would go away because you'd cool down to ambient temperature. And we have a different discussion for our video. So and really, we, if we were to observe in one color, we would not get, I guess, the complete picture yet again. If we turned off the lights, as he said, we wouldn't see here, but we'd see this. And if we're not looking in these colors of light, we completely miss the radiant heat that we're actually producing. That's right.